Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Physics to Computation. So today in this lecture I am going to talk about a topic which is stochastic differential equation and how to solve it and I will first talk about the theory part of it and uh, I'll next I will write a code and I will write the code for you and also show you the what is the difference between the stochastic differential equation and then ordinary differential equation. So let's first uh, know about the stochastic differential equation. So first uh, I define ordinary differential equation and here on the on the right hand side let's say define this uh, stochastic differential equation so i will be using this uh, shorthand notation which is uh, sd and od and uh, to defer to uh, denote this uh, ordinary differential equation and stochastic differential equation so what is ordinary differential equation so let's say if you have a variable uh, which is x of t and and if the variable vari like uh, follows this differential equation like the dx of t by dt and this variable let's say is a function of time and if the uh, this derivative of the variable is a function of x of t and t then we call it as a ordinary differential equation and this is a deterministic uh, uh, this function is uh, deterministic and if the solution is also deterministic so uh, how will you so how will you approach to solve it and then that is basically uh, you need to know the initial condition that is let's say x naught and also you need to uh, know uh, so the here as you can see that is, this is only the first order derivative is there so you need, will be needing only one constant uh, one constant to determine the constant so which is uh, this which is given as x x of zero is equal to x naught x naught but if it is a second order derivative then you will be needing two constants so number of constant needed is basically equal to the order of the differential equation so now uh, so uh, like you have solved this uh, differential equation of the uh, simple harmonic oscillator which i have already uploaded a lecture on that and omega square x of t which is equal to zero so here you know that you need to know this x of zero and also you need to know that x dot of 0 which is v naught so these two conditions you need to know to solve this differential equation because it's a second order differential equation and here if it is a only a first order differential equation so we will be needing only one constant which is x of 0 is equal to x naught so now uh, let's see so now uh, this how, how to approach it how to solve it so let's say if we know that if we solve it and what will be the solution so it will be something like this so if you plot x of t versus t and this is let's say your x of x of 0 value this is 0 and the solution will be something like this but it is deterministic and this is at solution at time t this is solution at time 0 and this is solution at time t so you solve up to time t let's say and then you will get a function like this so this is basically deterministic right but uh, what will happen in the case of stochastic differential equation so that is our point of study today so in stoch in the case of stochastic differential equation you have this uh, term so which is d you will denote it by capital x so d sorry so dx of t is equal to so uh, and here will be f of x of t comma t which is uh, basically the deterministic part so there will be two part which is one is deterministic and another one which is stochastic part so here will be also one dt multiplied and now you have uh, a question in your mind that why i am writing this uh, this differential equation stochastic differential equation uh, in terms of the uh, difference equation right in terms of the differential form right here i am writing as the derivative form as you can see here but here i am writing as uh, the uh, differential form because the uh, point is basically uh, the brownian motion so the stochastic differential basically originates from this brownian motion which is continuous is uh, continuous in nature and not differentiable so that's why basically we, write, we used to write the stochastic differential equation in uh, this uh, in this differential form so that is basically the point and here uh, this is this part is basically so in a stochastic differential equation usually contains two part which is one is basically the stochastic one is basically the deterministic part which is this one and another one is basically this uh, noise part which is also called the stochastic part of the differential equation so now if you uh, try to plot it 
so this will look something like this so this is your x of t and this is basically your t and if you try to plot it so it, with the same initial condition it will be something like this and this like this so at time uh, up to time t let's say as you can see here the solution is not unique so if you uh, solve it first time you will get some some solution like this but if you solve it for second time you will get some solution like this but here in this case you will get only one solution because it's a, there is no stochastic term here in the ordinary differential equation case but here in this case you have uh, one stochastic term which basically changes the nature of the solution as you can see here so and also if you change the initial condition your, sol your type of the solution will be also changed and that is basically the property of the stochastic differential equation so now here uh, let's uh, know something about the noise term and then i will describe more about this thing and so basically this uh, original uh, this stochastic differential equation basically comes uh, which is also uh, an example of the stochastic differential equation is basically the langevin equation which describes the boundary and motion so Langevin equation which describes the Brownian motion. So, uh, so this is basically uh, this uh, Brownian motion is basically the so this Brownian motion is basically uh, random movement of a particle. in a fluid due to collision due to collision with the molecules molecules of the fluid so uh, the boundary motion is basically the random movement of a particle in a fluid due to the collision with the molecules of the fluid so so if you write the Langevin equation, it will look something like this. So m dv dt equal to minus lambda into v plus eta of t. So you can see here, this is basically an example of stochastic differential equation. And here you can, uh, you can easily recognize that this term is basically the deterministic term. deterministic term and this term is basically the stochastic term right so this is basically the thing so this is also this is an example of a stochastic differential equation and also there is uh, there is one uh, other another example which is basically called uh, the Johnson noise so let me classify the noise first so there are two mainly two types of noise which is uh, the white noise and the colored noise so this uh, ha, uh, has the reference in the Fourier space but uh, let me describe uh, just briefly so let's say if you have a noise term eta as you can you can see that uh, here in this equation and let's say if your eta follows this property like uh, this eta of t equal to 0 and let's say eta i of t and eta j of t prime which is the correlation between the noise and this follows basically this relation which is 2 kb t by gamma and delta of t minus t prime and delta of i j so let me erase this part this part uh, so I will describe the white noise here and later in the next page I will describe the colored noise so here uh, your if your noise is basically delta correlated and uh, so this basically uh, denotes a Gaussian noise Gaussian noise with zero mean and a variance and a variance which is delta correlated 
which is delta correlated so what does it mean so as you can see here if you can see uh, this is basically the mean of the noise and which is basically zero so if it uh, this is basically a Gaussian noise with zero mean and if you calculate the uh, correlation between the noise so that is basically uh, that is a function is a delta function and that's why it is called the variance is basically delta correlated so then basically it is called a white noise but uh, if your noise uh, so for the color noise so what will occur so for the color noise uh, your mean can still be zero it of t equal to zero but uh, what will happen is that if you try to get the correlation function then basically it will not be delta correlated but it will be a function of like any function of uh, t minus t prime so then basically and uh, then basically it is called let me uh, then basically it is called uh, a colored noise and uh, so let me erase the index because i'm not here in using the index here so if your if your uh, noise is basically not delta correlated but it will be a, 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 it is a function of some other function other kind of function like exponential like uh, any other function so if your uh, then basically if it is not delta correlated then basically it is called a colored noise and uh, here uh, the point is that uh, so it is uh, if it is let's say this is this is this f of t minus t prime so let's say your if example so let's say if your f of t minus t prime is something like this uh, some constant k b t by some c uh, exponential uh, minus t mod of t minus t prime by c r then basically it is called uh, this is basically is called a white uh, this is basically a exponentially correlated noise so this is uh, basically the difference between the noises and uh, this is a white and colored noise and so so this is basically a uh, thermal noise you can say this uh, thermal noise in electrical register let's say if you have a register like the if you have a circuit like this so the here you have this register and here you have this uh, capacitor and let's say the volt u is the voltage between the voltage between the register register and you know that uh, the electric voltage is generated by thermal fluctuation uh, in every register you that already know and if you uh, this is basically the register this is basically the capacitor and here the current flowing and so the, if you write the Langevin equation for this so what will be the Langevin equation first write the Hamiltonian of this thing so Hamilton is basically the energy by the kvt and this is basically uh, you know that this circuit has energy half of c u square and by kbt and if you write the langeva equation so what will uh, how it will look so this is basically du of dt equal to minus u by rc which is the uh, time constant of the circuit uh, or time of relaxation this is basically uh, the deterministic term and then basically a stochastic term which is eta of t now here this eta is basically exponentially correlated so if you uh, write down the this time down the term for the eta that will be less basically uh, eta will be uh, this uh, white noise uh, with delta correlated but if you write the correlation of the u then basically that will be exponentially correlated so it will be like 2 kbt by uh, rc square delta of t minus t prime but if you write the correlation for the uh, this uh, voltage then basically it will be uh, exponentially correlated so it will be something like kbt by c uh, exponential minus t minus t prime divided by rc so this is how basically it is uh, exponentially correlated so this is basically uh, exponentially correlated and so you can see this if c is small if c is very small then it becomes a white noise right so if you see if c is very very small then it will basically exactly same as the white noise so that is basically all about the noises
so now you have this differential equation that I already written which is uh, dx of t which is a for uh, so s d e and dx of t which is a for x t comma t uh, dt plus uh, j of t dt now here also your uh, one of the initial condition is being provided so x of 0 which is uh, x of 0 and also one point is that so here if you you can solve it uh, using the same method as uh, we did for the ordinary differential equation but there will be some uh, difference uh, which I will tell you so now uh, so let's say you can write this equation as the following so let's first uh, see how to solve the uh, ordinary differential equation and then I will go to the uh, stochastic differential equation part so then that will be easier for you to understand so let's say if you have a simple uh, differential equation like uh, dx dt dx of t dt is equal to some lambda into x of t so then what will be the solution so you already know the solution right so this will be basically how will you solve it so this is basically a ordinary differential equation and if you solve it you will get like uh, x of t which is equal to x of 0 e to the power minus lambda into t right so this will basically the solution because you can just integrate and then you will get the solution so it will be plus sorry and this will be to the power plus lambda t because you just uh, keep you just take this x of t here in the denominator and then you just integrate you will get something like this so this is basically your uh, solution for ordinary differential equation but now let's say if you have the uh, stochastic differential equation then how will we, how will it look so then basically it is not straightforward because uh, you have this uh, term which is dx of t so this is ode and now if you uh, write in terms of the st then how it will look so dx of t your equation will be minus some uh, lambda so this uh, lambda into this x of t uh, sorry x of t uh, into dt uh, plus of zeta of t so here it is this analytical solution is not straightforward and he this is basically can be solved numerically so numerical solution now here uh, jit t is basically as i said it is basically white noise so jit t is uh, will write uh, this you will also we can write as this j t into d t basically so j t into d t we will also write you can also write a d dot w t so this is basically a uh, call winner process and so what is winner process i will describe i will just describe in a while and but before that uh, let me uh, talk about this thing so this d w t is uh, basically uh, this is basically a Gaussian wide noise and this with uh, with zero mean and uh, the standard deviation is equal to square root of dt so that is basically this thing so this is basically a Gaussian noise with uh, zero mean and this standard deviation sigma is equal to square root of dt so that is the thing uh, to solve for the numerical uh, solution so each time when you will just solve it numerically each time you need to generate a Gaussian wide noise with this mean and this standard deviation and then you need to add to this difference uh, this differential equation and then you will solve it so now so okay okay so this is how basically uh, this you write this stochastic differential equation and so let's uh, know more about this stochastic differential equation so let's say you have some equation like this so let's say you have some equation like this dx equal to some p dt plus some dq into dbt so this is bt this basically is the stochastic part so this is basically the examples so this is basically the stochastic part of the differential equation and this is basically the deterministic part 
and now here if you let, let's say provided with x of 0 is equal to x 0 and now if q is equal to 0 then you know already know the solution which is x of t equal to x naught plus p t right so this is basically a known solution which is ordinary it becomes basically ordinary differential equation but let's say if your uh, if your q is not 0 then how will you solve it so then basically if your q is not 0 then basically you will solve it like this so p d t plus q into d b of t which is basically the stochastic part so you will just integrate and so it will integrate from 0 to x uh, so this is basically d x of t so this is uh, will go from so 0 to t d x of t and uh, uh, so not 0 to t so 0 to uh, yeah 0 to t so d x of t and here will also grow from 0 to t and so let me write it clearly so d x of t will integrate so it will both from uh, both side 0 to t and this is straight forward so this uh, thing will be x of t minus x of 0 you already know that and here it will be pt you know that and here will be q into bt so now uh, what will be your solution x of t will be equal to x0 plus pt plus q into bt and now here uh, so this this term this pt term is basically drip term it's called deep term and this term is called basically the diffusion in Brownian motion diffusion in Brownian motion so uh, there are several lemma to solve this stochastic differential equation one is basically called this Ito's lemma and uh, so there are several other things to know but uh, let me only only uh, let me uh, just not uh, go there because that will take more time no, and this is basically some this is basically a brief idea how to solve this uh, solve this numerical uh, solve this uh, stochastic differential equation and so there is one lemma which is called Ito's lemma and which you uh, know that this uh, you should know that this is basically let me describe this Ito's lemma and then I will go to the numerical solution. So Ito's lemma, what Ito's lemma tell us is that, so let's say uh, if you have that differential equation that I already told you, and let's say x is equal to h t comma y is a solution, and then you can write dx as del h by del t into dt plus del h by del y into dy plus half of del 2 h by del 2 del y 2 dy dx into dy and here uh, dx uh, is basically we will write as rx into dt plus sigma x into dbt if this is your uh, differential uh, equation then uh, and you can take this this as a solution and this will follow like if this derivative of this differential equation of this will follow like this and uh, here we will also need because it's a faster differential equation this this one is a faster differential equation here you will be needing only one constant which is x of 0 equal to x naught and it, from here also you can you can know the solution of the geometric Brownian equation uh, and also the black, uh, back souls equation of the of price financial de uh, financial uh, derivatives and uh, several other thing you can solve using this uh, differential equation so so that is basically the thing and uh, here now let's let me just solve it for you and then we'll describe the other thing so let's say your x is basically h of t comma y equal to let's say e x naught e to the power y let's take it and let's this is my case and your y which is equal to r minus sigma square by 2 into t plus d sigma into dbt okay and then uh, your if you write this dx from here what will be what will occur so dx if you write so del h by del t you know that L, there is no t dependence so it will be 0 
plus uh, this e derivative with respect to y which will give you x naught e to the power y dy plus it will give half uh, x naught e to the power y dy into dy so let me introduce a page here So this is uh, this we will get, and then basically if you write dy, then you will get uh, this is r minus sigma squared by two, and this is d into r minus sigma squared by two into dt plus sigma into dbt, and your dy into dy will be equal to sigma square into dt because it basically this there is a rule which is uh, or the identity you can say so uh, this. If you have uh, this dt and dbt multiplication rule, that is basically li it's like this. So dt dbt, and if you multiply with the dt and dt, you will get zero. If you multiply with dt with dbt, you will get zero. If you multiply with dbt with dt, zero. And but if you multiply with dbt and dbt, you, you will get dt. So from this, using this identity, we will get uh, this uh, dy dy will be equal to sigma square into dt. So this is basically one identity you need to remember. You can also prove that. And so this is how basically you sort. And then basically if you integrate it, you will get x of t will be equal to x zero exponential r minus half of sigma squared into t plus sigma into b t. So this is with the solution. So now let's uh, let's look at the numerical way to solve it. And then I will go to the coding part. So, so what is our equation? So, our equation is dx of t will be equal to a for x t comma t and dt plus j of t theta of t dt, which is the noise part. Now, uh, you have one uh, thing which is this uh, initial condition. And now, if you write it numerically, what will ha what will happen? So, you can write it like this. This is basically x of t plus delta t my, uh, minus x of t and equal to a for x of t comma t dt dt you can write as delta t delta t plus w delta w so dw that I was talking about this is dw and this you can write as delta of w t right and here delta of w t is basically a Gaussian uh, Gaussian noise with mean zero and standard deviation like this square root of delta t and this week also you can write square root of delta t you can take common and you will write zero one so this will basically a Gaussian Gaussian random number with zero mean and standard deviation equal to 1 so this is how you will solve it and uh, so now uh, basically this is basically your delta wt and uh, you if you write the steps of progression which is x of t plus delta t which is x of t plus a of x sorry a of x of t comma t delta t plus uh, this square root of delta t into Gaussian wide no Gaussian uh, random number with uh, zero mean and one standard deviation so this is basically the numerical scheme that I am going to follow and this has a particular name which is called Euler Maruyama scheme So e, to solve the ordinary differential equation, we used to use this uh, Euler scheme, but here it, this uh, this scheme is little bit modified, and which is called Euler Marium scheme, Marium scheme. And for ordinary differential, this is basically for SDE. And you know, for ordinary differential equation, it is very straightforward. If you want to solve it numerically, uh, anyway, it is uh, solvable in uh, uh, solvable analytically, but you can also solve it numerically. So for ODE, what we will do that is basically simplest Euler scheme. So your x t plus delta t will be equal to x of t plus this f of x of t 
so a of x of t comma t into delta t so this is basically called simplest order forward euler scheme forward euler scheme so this is how you solve a stochastic differential equation using this uh, numerical uh, this is how you solve it numerically and uh, there are uh, several other scheme which is higher which is basically the higher order scheme for this uh, for this so for to solve this stochastic differential equation but uh, the point is that you can solve it uh, correctly using this uh, euler mariyama scheme unless otherwise you need this higher accuracy method you can uh, you can still use this uh, uh, this scheme to solve this stochastic differential equation so now let's go to the coding part and then let's i'll, I'll write the code uh, for a particular uh, differential equation which uh, first i will add uh, the, uh, we, uh, first i will solve it without this uh, without the stochastic part which is basically the ordinary differential equation and then i will add the stochastic part and see how, how it will deviate from the uh, how it will deviate from the uh, ordinary differential equation solution so let's go to the coding part now to, uh, so that formula that I just derived is basically for the geometric boundary and motion. So uh, let me uh, simulate that thing. So before that, uh, let me uh, revise that first. Uh, so the general form of a stochastic differential equation is basically d of x of t. You can write in differential form, which is d of x of t is basically equal to a t comma x of t dt and plus b of t comma x of t uh, dbt. Where dbt is the uh, white Gaussian noise that I just described in my video and so uh, so this is basically a general form of stochastic differential equation uh, and the geometric boundary and motion is basically a special case of this general form where uh, this becomes this a of t comma x of t is basically becomes mu of x of t and b of t comma x of t becomes sigma of x of t and dbt is basically that i just described is the gaussian white noise which is gaussian random number with zero mean and standard deviation equal to one and now here uh, and also uh, here uh, there is a uh, multiplication of square root of dt and if you solve this uh, uh, differential equation exactly which i just derived and the exact solution of this uh, geometric boundary and motion is basically equal to x of t equal to x of 0 which is the value of the solution at g is equal to 0 into e to the power minus mu by sigma square by 2 into t plus sigma into bt b of t uh, so this is basically the exact solution so now what I will do is basically I will solve this, uh, I will simulate this uh, differential equation using euler mariyama scheme uh, in Python and also uh, then what I will uh, show is that I will show the simulated curve and the exact solution uh, side by side such that you can map between these two. And so let me go to the code then. So, so this is basically the code for this uh, stochastic euler method for the geometric boundary and motion. So let me describe the code line by line for you and so first what I did is basically I have imported two of the libraries which is one of the library named numpy and another library is matplotlib. So first library is for the array handling and the square root uh, or the mathematical stuff and the matplotlib is basically for plotting. So I import uh, numpy as np and matplotlib as plot and so next what i uh, did is basically i define the figure which is uh, for the plotting which is fig is equal to plot dot figure and this is this uh, uh, ax is equal to figure dot uh, at underscore subplot one 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 so this basically is for the plotting and next what i did i have to define the values of mu sigma and x zero to solve the differential equation i choose mu to be one sigma to be one and x zero to be also equal to one so this uh, values you have to provide otherwise you will not get the solution of the differential equation and next what I did the total time for solution is I took it as 1 and uh, the n uh, number of points I choose to, to be 2 to the power 8 and uh, I define dt is basically 1 by that value n. So you can see that uh, the how small the dt is. And then basically I, I discretize the time uh, such that it goes from the uh, dt to the total time step uh, capital T and I discretize it like this way using np dot arrange. And then what I did I basically call a random seed uh, and then I call a Gaussian random number here as you can see using this np dot random dot randn and n. So in this n basically means that I will uh, generate uh, Gaussian random numbers uh, capital N times 
means 2 to the power 8 times and this uh, basically is multiplied with the uh, square root of dt so here np is basically because of this li uh, because of this li uh, library that i have imported so there the square root is there so that's why np dot square root of dt dt is the times uh, smallest time step and this is how db is calculated and next uh, then i found b by indicating that uh, that is basically the uh, cumulative sum of this uh, b as you can see here and then i basically define the theoretical exact solution which is x0 into exponential and again this exponential is imported from this uh, library uh, numpy so that's why np dot exp and then mu minus sigma square by 2 into t plus sigma into b so this is my exact solution and now what i will do is basically i will uh, integrate it and and i will compare the with the exact solution so now uh, then i define two of the arrays which is one is x simulation and another one is x and i uh, start the x from x0 here as you can see here and then i go from uh, uh, from a variable j goes from uh, uh, 0 to n and then uh, basically uh, I integrate it by this writing this thing so x plus equal means basically x equal to x plus mu of uh, mu into x into dt plus sigma into x into db of j so this plus equal signs means that x equal to x plus uh, this value and if, if there if uh, so if it is minus equal then it will basically means that x is equal to x minus that thing but here in this case it is plus equal so that means x new is equal to x old plus this thing so then basically i append the values of x in the array x simulation so this is how i integrate and then basically what i did is basically i plot the theoretical curve first which is uh, t which i uh, using this plot function which is uh, plt dot plot t comma x theory which i already have calculated and then i label it as exact solution uh, and then uh, then basically the simulated curve which is t comma x simulation and i uh, labeled it as euler mariama scheme and i uh, s place uh, place the legend in legend in the upper left corner you can also choose lower right upper right or something like that and i choose it with font size 14 and then i last comment is basically plot dot show so that is to show the plot so uh, so this is basically the simple 30 line code for the python and so let me run the code for you and then uh, i will uh, show you the then i will uh, then i will show the uh, let me show you the plots first so i will open interactive python and then i will run euler sd.py and type enter and as you can see here uh, the values are quite matching with each other and this this is look uh, this blue curve is basically the exact solution and the orange curve is basically the uh, simulated curve as you can see they are matching quite well so it, if you type q it will uh, cl be closed and then if you change the uh, let's say uh, let's say mu if you change from 1 to 0 and then also the initial condition if you change from uh, 1 to 2 then uh, let's see what happens so yeah so you can see this uh, property of the solution has changed and as you can see here uh, it starts from uh, this value now and so this is basically how it goes so this is how we can solve this geometric boundary motion using uh, euler mariama scheme in uh, python and nextly what i will what i will describe is basically i will uh, talk about the uh, talk about the solution simulation uh, simulation of the stochastic stochastic differential equation in fortran so uh, so so this is basically the python code so if you uh, uh, if you don't understand any part of the code please let me know in my uh, in my uh, uh, telegram group physics through computation please join uh, to my group such that we can discuss uh, about this code and you can pause the video anytime to uh, learn and write e each and every part of the code so now i will describe the photon uh, so like photon part of the simulation so now let me describe the code uh, line by line so i have already written the code because it's a little bit long code to describe so uh, so that's uh, i to save the time i just wrote the code and i'll just describe uh, in front of you uh, line by line such that you will you can write your own code and you can pause the video anytime and write uh, write the code that i have written here so what is the first part so first part is basically i have generated a uh, this a random number uh, which is uniform using the intrinsic uh, photon intrinsic random number so 
before going to that so here you can see i have defined a module here so this is how we define a module in fortran and this side you write this module and then a module name and then implicit none and then basically if we have some global variable you want to initialize here so you can initialize here the global variables and if don't if you don't have any initial uh, global variables then you can just write the implicit none and then contents and after content you just write the subroutine functions uh, all the other things you have in your code so here i have two subroutines which is first one is basically the uniform random number generator so here i am generating a uniform random number you can see here i am just uh, defining this uh, st uh, random st standard uniform and here uh, you can see i am just calling this random number and then basically i am just uh, uh, i am just passing it to, to the uh, output variable and then basically i have also one subroutine which is stand a random standard normal uh, this is basically which it is basically used to generate the gaussian white noise or Gaussian noise with zero mean with uh, standard deviation one. You can see here, this is basically how we generate using the uh, box Muller method. And you basically need two random, uh, two uh, uniform random number E1 and E2, and using that, you will just generate another variable X, which is basically Gaussian noise with uh, zero mean and one standard deviation. So, this is how we basically generate the uh, stochastic part of the differential equation. So, this we will be needing in our uh, in our main code. So in our main program, so here I am using uh, the using the PVR subroutine here in this inside this subroutine. So here also you can see that how to use a subroutine inside a subroutine. So here now basically uh, this is basically the stochastic part of the differential equation. So now let me go. This is how and then basically I end the module here, as you can see here, and then basically I go to the main program. So this is the main program. And there is one function that I have defined, so you can just define any function of your choice. And here I have defined a function which is minus alpha into x, which I just described in my theory part of the uh, of this video. And this is basically a function which is alpha into x, and I took alpha to be 1.2. So your uh, the deterministic part of the differential equation will be minus alpha into x. So this is uh, I basically define external function and here in the main code i basically use the module so this is the module name para so that's why i use use para and then implicit none and then basically i initialize all the variable and also declare all the variables you can see here so uh, let's say my uh, at t is equal to zero my uh, initial value of x starts from one and the maximum t that i want to go with which is let's say 10 and let's say my step which is the delta t which i defined here as h and which is basically uh, 0 0.001 uh, d0 d0 is basically used for double precision and also i defined a quantity like force basically force take care of the noisy part of the uh, differential equation so as you can see here so now basically i'm integrating it so do while t less than t max that means do until t, your t is less than equal to t max so i'm putting a counter so i'll describe why i'm putting that counter so then basically I am uh, increasing that t by the delta t which is h here and then I am calling a uh, Gaussian random number with 0 mean and 1 standard deviation and then I am adding to that uh, that integration step which is x which is the new x which is equal to the old x plus the delta t into the, uh, the deterministic part of the uh, force which is this and the stochastic part which is this uh, Gaussian white Gaussian noise into square root of delta t that I was just writing in that uh, in my theory parts. So this is how you integrate and you will get the egg value of x and now wh why I am putting that counter uh, because uh, because you, the, you, you, you can see here your delta t is very very small so if you write the solution if you write the solution at each step there will be too much data that's why I am putting the counter. I am writing the solution at each 500 step. So that's why this mod of counter comma 500 is equal equal zero. Then basically I just uh, write the solution. So the counter equal equal one means at the first step I just write and then after onwards uh, each and every 500 step I basically write the solution p and x and then I basically close the loop. So when t reaches this t max which is 10 
then basically it automatically exit the loop and basically it close also see write the data here and also close the file so that is how the program structure looks like and if you just switch off this part uh, of the code then basically it is it will be ordinary differential equation and you will get a uh, exponentially decay solution because you know that this if your uh, dsdt is minus alpha x then basically it will be basically solution x of t will be x0 into uh, e to the power minus uh, alpha t so that is basically that will be basically your solution so let me first try that one so data let's say data let's say that the name as data one let's say and let's switch off this let's comment out this part so now you have only this part in your integration not you are not using this uh, Gaussian uh, random number so that's why you switch off that also so this is basically the ordinary Euler's forward Euler method and you, will get, you should get a uh, you should get a exponentially decay solution so let me check that so g fortran minus o3 which is uh, the compilation flag and then Euler and dot slash a dot out so let me plot it first for you so plot data so i'll be using genu plot to plot it with lp line width 2.57 size 2 so you see you will get a exponentially decay solution as you can see here right so your solution is exponentially decaying so now let uh, let uh, save this data and let's see how uh, the behavior changes if you add the behavior of the solution changes if you add the stochastic term so let me switch on the stochastic term here now so let me save it into a different file which is data2 and then run it okay so learn and then uh, dot slash error out and let's see how the solution changes data2 dot that with lp line with 2 point type 7 point size 2 yeah you see you see your solution has changes a lot and it is basically a random quantity you can see here is the zigzag zigzag behavior and your solution is no longer a exponential thing as as you see earlier so now if you let's say if you save into a defined file and run again you will get a different solution isn't that surprising so let's see so now I have saved it in a different file data3 dot that so let me plot that data3 which is also using the stochastic term with lp line with 2 uh, point type 7 point size 2 then plot it you can see that there is uh, there is no match with the earlier solution earlier stochastic uh, solution and this stochastic solution although they start from the same initial value as you can see here if I zoom in but they have this different behavior as you can see and every time you will get and you will run you will get a new solution like this this new stochastic solution but for the deterministic case, you will get the same and same solution so so your uh, this stochastic differential equation is probabilistic so depending on the uh, probability you will get the uh, different different solution so every, every time you will run you will get different different solution like this so this is how you solve a stochastic differential equation using this euler mariyama scheme and this is basically a simplest way to show how the euler method works for uh, this uh, stochastic differential equation and uh, ordinary differential equation using the simplest example possible and thank you for watching this video please uh, subscribe to my channel if you are new to my channel and please share my channel to your friends colleagues thank you